everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So here we are for April wrap up part two. Today's April 30th so technically I could still finish the book I'm currently reading today but I kind of doubt that's going to happen but I figured we were as caught up as we were going to be um, so that book that I'm currently reading will probably be in my May wrap up so keep your eyes peeled for that. But let's just dive in. If you watched the first half of April, you know the first half of April was a little bit rocky, but I also went on vacation, so totally made sense. I kicked it so into gear for the end of April. I don't even know where it came from. I have a feeling it's because I listened to a lot of audiobooks. And that really helped kick my ratio up a little bit, but I also did read physically and I read some Kindle books, so it's a, it was a good mixture. So let's just dive in. So I started this half by finishing The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. This is the first book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. And I was really excited about it because it was technically kind of like a Disney World type of book. And you know me in Disney World. I needed to read it. Um, so we're following this guy and his grandfather who like owned the Disney World. Um, it's not Disney World. I think it's literally called Dream World. Dreamland. Um, so the person who owned Dreamland, he dies and he basically kind of leaves it to his like son slash his like three grandsons. And one of the grandsons that we're following in this book, he kind of gets told like, hey, you need to be director for the next six months. You need to study all of the weaknesses of the park. And then at the end of that six months, you need to have a plan of how we're going to fix this and it's going to get voted by the board and if it gets approved then you're golden if not like you lose all your inheritance he also bumps into this girl who has always dreamed of being a creator it kind of got ripped out from underneath her at one point and she is currently one of the beauticians in like essentially the bippity boppity boutique so she's like a beautician who like turns the girls into little princesses and he kind of has this like he's very grumpy and booty and then he bumps into her and he's like she's too good to be true she must be a fraud let me figure her out and then like they have this like contest to plan a new fix and she ends up applying while she's drunk out of her mind and she like rips apart one of the newest most expensive rides that the park has built and so she ends up becoming a creator and they kind of have to work with each other but like they are so like oil and vinegar with each other in the beginning like they can't stand each other and as time goes on, they start to kind of develop feelings for each other. I gave this one three stars. I don't know. I just, I loved the plot. I loved the idea of it. I loved the land. I loved the setting. You know, I loved all of that. But I didn't like the characters. Like, I could care less about them. I don't understand why they're together. I think it's definitely a very lust-filled relationship, even though, like, I don't even see that spark between them. Like, I don't, like, he's so miserable that I can't see her being like, you know what, he's hot. I'm going to do him anyway. Like, I just, like, I don't think these these characters would actually connect on a real level in the real world. And I think that's where I really struggled with it. And then at one point, it kind of takes it away from the Disneyland, not Disneyland, Dreamland. It takes them away from there. And I found myself, like, missing out. I was like, I want to be in the theme park. The whole thing is the theme park. Bring me back to the theme park. So... It was all right. I just think that I didn't drive with the characters. Their sex scenes just seemed a bit much. <laughs> Obviously, they're going to be in here, but, like, it was just, it made me, like, kind of roll my eyes. So I'm hoping that book two will be better. I'm hoping that it's a character issue and not a book issue and not a, like, author issue. Um, so obviously I own the rest of the books. I'm going to give them a try, but for right now, this one stays at a three. I also finished The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. This is essentially like a whodunit in um, the greatest, great British Bake Off, essentially. So we are following this woman who um, has kind of made herself known as a chef. And she has this show called like The Bake Week. I think it's The Bake Week, The Week Bake. Something about baking for a week. It's like a competition that she has at her like elite mansion. Um, and she's been having this show for a really long time and they kind of are starting to realize like she's old, maybe we need to replace her. So they have bring in like a co-host for her, which she is not thrilled about. And we are following like all the different contestants and the different bakes and like things are going wrong. Like somebody's sugar gets replaced with salt and just like these weird things start happening. 
and it was just a really fun time. I gave it four stars. I think it needed to be a little bit more flushed out. It is only like 270 pages, and I think if it was like even 300 pages, I think it would have been a little bit better. I think it just needed a little bit more development in areas, but it was still fun, really easy going. If you like the British Bake Off, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Um, I'm glad that I got it. Then I listened to The Happy Place by Emily Henry. I knew I was getting it physically, but then I had the audiobook available to me on Libro FM, and that's how I listened to Book Lovers. So for some reason, I just like was like, I need to listen to it. I could not stop listening to this one. Like, I just was like, I hate that I'm working right now because all I want to do is listen to this book. I did not want to put it down. I gave it five stars. Um, we're following a woman named Harriet, and she has been in love with her, like, college sweetheart, Wynn, forever. They are, like, the it couple. They're engaged to get married. Like, everybody loves them. Unfortunately, what everybody doesn't know is that Harriet and Wynn have broken off their relationship. Wynn has gone back home to take care of his mother, who's not doing well, and Harriet is in a residency. And we don't really know what made them break up, but we know that they are not together. Now, they have a friend group who gets together at this main beach house all the time. And this is their time to go. And they kind of make a deal of, like, you're not going to go. I'm going to go. So Harriet's turn is to go. And she gets there, and he is there, and she's like, I thought we agreed, like, we're not doing this. But, like, when she gets there, he immediately, like, makes out with her, because they have to almost kind of, like, still show this, like, they're together, even because nobody knows that they're not together. And when they get there, they find out that the friend who owns this beach house, like, the family is selling the beach house. And her friend is determined to make this, like, the one best final trip ever, her and her boyfriend are going to get married at the end of this trip. So then Harriet and Wynn are like, maybe we need to continue pretending like we're still engaged because we don't want to ruin everybody else's week. So they kind of have this like antics of trying to pretend like they're still engaged, even though they don't, they're not engaged, but also they secretly still love each other. So there is a lot of miscommunication in this, but for some reason it worked 100% for me. We are following Harriet in the real world, as she calls it, and then other chapters called The Happy Place, which is kind of where they had fallen in love, and we're following their journey to kind of figure out, like, why aren't they together anymore? Like, what happened? Like, and it was just, it was fantastic. If you're looking for a beach read and you love Emily Henry or you have been wanting to try Emily Henry, I would try this. And like I said, it was miscommunication, and I still loved it, which I don't say very often, so... That was exciting. And then I came off of that and I was like, I immediately need another audiobook. So I ended up picking up You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose on audio again through the Libro FM ALC program. And guys, this was so good too. I gave this one four and a half stars. Yeah, four and a half stars. This is another one that like I could not put down. I wanted to listen to it immediately and all the way through if I could. And we are following this woman who goes off to this Airbnb. She kind of, like, picks random places to go all the time. And this is, like, a completely random place. But she, she goes to this Airbnb to stay with this, like, guy. Because the guy lives there also. And um, he they start to kind of actually, like, fall in love. Like, they start to kind of have a romance for each other. They think they're, like, she really starts to like him and he really starts to like her. The weird thing is, though, she's starting to get really creeped out by him and thinking that he's starting to get kind of obsessed with her, which she doesn't really like. And then he's also, like, starting to get people saying, like, hey, don't you think she's kind of rather creepy? On top of that, the last guest who stayed at this Airbnb has gone missing. So, adds to the creep factor. I really liked this one. Being in both of their heads was so interesting because, like, being in his head, I felt like I was listening to Joe from You. Like, I haven't read that book in years. Like, I read that back when, like, it first came out, and I haven't watched the show or anything, but I was like, I'm listening to Joe. Like, this guy sounds like Joe. Like, and so I think because of that, I was immediately, like, so creeped up by him, and I was like, she needs to get heck out of here but then like people started 
planting seeds that she was creepy. And I was like, no, she's not. Like, I was so bought into her as, like, not being creepy because I was so hyped into him being Joe. So it was really, like, an interesting tug of feelings of, like, who am I supposed to be suspicious of? I don't know who to be suspicious of. And it was a really good time. I gave it four and a half stars. Another perfect summer, fast-paced read. And you won't regret it. After that, I read What He Never Knew by Candy Steiner. This is the third book in the Best Kept Secret series. Technically, it's like a duet and then this one. So, like, we're following um, in the very first book a woman who is married and she's not necessarily happy in her marriage and things ensue where she kind of has a decision to make between another man from her past and her husband and it was, like, the one time, like, cheating in a book has ever, like, had me still entranced because I typically don't like that trope whatsoever. But I was so bought in and I remember sobbing and crying and all that. And this is supposed to follow the man that she doesn't choose. So I'm not going to say who it is because I feel like that's spoiling the first series. Um, but this is following the second person, like, the person he do she does not choose. And I hadn't heard great things about this one. And I really toyed back and forth with, do I read it or do I pass? But because I am who I am and I would love to read all of her books, I was like, you need to read it. So I sucked it up. I finally bought it. I read it on Kindle Unlimited. And I wish I didn't. I gave this one three stars. I think it's a just all right book. I think you still have the candy style writing in it. I just... I couldn't back the relationship. I didn't understand the relationship. I didn't see the chemistry in the relationship. There's a big age gap in this one. And there's something that happens with this main character, which is why she's in his life in the first place, that I don't think that she would go from that to him as smoothly as she did. So I don't know how to say that without like completely spoiling the first two books. Um, because I don't want to talk about that because like there's a key element about this guy that would totally give everything away. So I don't know. Um, I give it three stars. I think it's a solid candy book. It just, I think I would have just preferred the initial duology. Like if this is where his life took him, great. But like, I didn't need to know that. Um, then for my next audiobook, I listened to Adelaide. Um, I'm blanking on who wrote this, but I will obviously insert a picture somewhere. I listened to this one through Libro FM. I came really close to adding this to my book of the month box, even though I knew I had already have the audiobook. But I find when I already have the audiobook available to me, and then I buy the book anyways, and then I still listen to the audiobook, I end up hating the book. I don't feel as strongly or good about the book. So I was like, I think I need to actually just listen to the audiobook and not buy it. And now I'm slightly regretting it because now I don't have it for pictures or to hold up because it is such a beautiful cover. So we're following Adelaide. And Adelaide is studying abroad um, with a bunch of other friends. And she ends up coming into the life of a man. And she obviously sparks this relationship with him. And it's a tumultuous one. She very much wants him to love her. And he has gone through things that kind of don't let him. And you really see her mental health struggle because she so much wants him to love her. And he just cannot give that to her. And so, like, the things she's doing and the things she's going through trying to, like, make her life fit into his is just, like, heartbreaking. And she has such discoveries and such hurt and trigger warnings for lots of mental health, so, um, trigger warnings for suicide, um, because she just gets into such a dark place. Like, she has such strong feelings one way or the other. When she is happy, she is on cloud nine, and when she is not, she is down. And so she kind of goes through such waves of this, and it was a really beautiful story. I was definitely crying by the end of it. Um, and I gave this one four stars because there was some times where, like, the timeline of events kind of would get jostled and I would get a little confused. I think also because I wasn't physically reading it when it would do that. I wasn't necessarily aware it was doing that. And I'd be like, wait, what? I thought he was dating her. And, like, I get a little lost. Um, 
So there is a little confusion there. I did hear, however, that if you read the physical book, there are no quotation marks. So if that's something that would bother you, I would highly recommend the audiobook because you don't notice it in the audiobook because you can tell when people are talking and having conversations. So if you are somebody who does not like the fact that people don't include quotation marks in your book, but you still want to read the story, I would highly recommend the audio. The audio was fantastic. So still gave it four stars. Um, and I enjoyed it. So that was a good thing because I was worried I wasn't going to. And then I read... A, this last weekend was insane. I don't know how I did it, but I finished two books from start to finish, like one in one day, one in the other, which is rare because they like never do that, especially with the two kids now. I like, and that's why I didn't film last weekend too, was because I was so engaged in my reading that I did not want to give that up to then go film. So the first book I read was Stone Cold Fox by Rachel Collarcroft. Um, this is a like, this is like kind of like ex-con type of story. So we're following a girl who when she grew up was basically raised by a mother who was essentially a con artist. They would find a man, marry a man, get everything they needed from him, kill him off or do something with him or leave him and then like go off, find somebody else wealthy and take advantage. And so like she spent a lot of her childhood just like jumping from home to home and to man to man and like watching her mother do this and like helping her mom to accomplish some of the schemes that she was doing. And she's finally reached a point where she's like, I've had enough. I can't do this. I don't want to live my life like this anymore. And she sets sight on a wealthy man because she feels like if she marries him, she's set for life. Like she doesn't need to keep going and scheming. She's not like her mom. She wants to go meet him, marry him stay with him just for that sense of safety and that sense of security um, and to not have a want or a need for anything. Um, but obviously her past is going to come bite her in the butt. We have um, his best friend who's a woman who like clearly is like, you can't marry this girl. Like there's issues there. Like you can't do it. And she's kind of like going to try to do anything in her power too to kind of like stop this relationship. This was so unput downable, and I've seen mixed reviews. I've seen people really, really love it, and then I've seen a sprinkling of people who didn't, which is why it took me so long to actually pick it up, because originally I was going to pick it up immediately after I got it, and then I had seen, like, one or two, like, sprinkled in of bad reviews, and it, like, put me on pause for a minute. I was like, I'm going to be the unpopular opinion. I'm going to be the unpopular opinion. But I ended up giving it four and a half stars. I came so close to giving it the fifth star. And to be honest, I really don't know what stopped me from giving it the fifth star, but there was just, like, something holding me up from it. So it's definitely a four and a half closer to five than a four and a half closer to four, which is exciting. I really liked the trying to figure out what was going on, what was going to play out. This definitely hit a little bit of trauma with me. Um, I wouldn't necessarily give it trigger. Like, there are definitely trigger warnings for things in there. Um... But it wasn't necessarily common trigger warnings that would trigger that like actually triggered me. So like I no but nothing that was like flagged would have been like steered me away. Um, so it was just interesting to see how that played out in me a little bit. Uh, maybe that's where the half star got ducked because I was a little traumatized. I don't know. Um, but yeah, solid solid read it was essentially a five star read. And then the other book that I read from start to finish was Symphonies of Se Symphony of Symphony of Secrets by Brendan Slocum. This was Beast. Um, this book is not as beastly as you think. It's like only just... It's just about 220 pages. And not 220 pages, that wouldn't make sense. 420 pages. So like this makes it look chunkier than it is. The pages are really like thickly printed. Um, so I think that was that, but guys, this is the second book that, so like the sophomore novel of him, he wrote The Violent Conspiracy, which was my second favorite book of the year last year. And this was another five star read. So like, not only did I read two books in one weekend, but they were both five, like I'm going to pretend this is five stars. They were essentially both five star reads for that weekend, which was fantastic. So in this one, which is a little bit different than The Violin Conspiracy, is this one kind of alternates between historical fiction and contemporary. So we're following a man uh, named Gurn, and he is like basically like dedicated his life to this famous, famous composer, this composer who had passed away in the 1920s. 
and he has kind of dedicated his career to that. The man who died had a foundation. I'm trying to think of what it's called. The Delaney Foundation. And um, that's basically where he got his musical start because the Delaney Foundation puts instruments in kids' hands that can't afford them. So he, like, owes his life, essentially, to the Delaney Foundation. He did a lot of work in college following the Delaney work. And um, there was one piece of work that Delaney, Frederick Delaney, worked on, which was for the Olympics. And he had four operas, one for each color of the rings, and the red one stirred some controversy because it was supposed to come out it didn't come out it got delayed and then when it finally did come out it was awful because nobody could understand what happened so I guess when it was supposed to come out it got delayed because it got lost and he had to rewrite it from scratch and so then it took him time to rewrite it and by the time he rewrote it it was like garbage like nobody liked it he got really bad reviews and then he killed him and then now Byrne gets a call from the foundation and he, they're like, hey, come here, sign this NDA, and then we'll tell you what we got. And so he does, and he finds out that they have found the original Red. And they essentially want him to authenticate it. And he had just gotten a professor, professor job, so he kind of has to, like, put that on hold and, like, dive into this. But then... Him and his other friend that he kind of pulls into this to work with him start thinking and discovering something else about it that has them questioning everything. It tells you what they find in the synopsis, but I feel like that was such a spoiler. I don't know why it's in there. So they find something that leads, like, this could be the destruction of the Foundation if it gets out. And the Foundation doesn't want their secrets being told. So we're following that, but then we're also following the past, following like him becoming who he was like where he started all the way up to where he became this famous composer all the way up to what ended up happening with red in the first place and guys it was insane like i said the synopsis i feel like gives so much like i don't understand synopsises that give so much information because i feel like if i had read this i feel like i would have been able to guess everything that had happened so i would highly recommend don't read the synopsis um but I was just so engripped, so engaged in the story, and I'm so glad that I read it, obviously. And I'm really excited to see how he continues as an author. This one obviously had more music, I feel like, than The Violin Conspiracy, because that one was just mostly, like, finding this violin. This one was so much about the music, so there was definitely lots of music lingo that went over my head. But at the same time, I, like, didn't mind, because it, it was necessary for the story. You're talking about a composer. If it didn't talk about music, I think I would have questions so went over my head a little bit but it was still five stars I'm so glad that I read like it came in the mail and I was like do I read it sooner than later but then I was like no like you can't read it you have backlist books that you need to read first and I decided to pick it up anyways and I'm so glad that I did five five stars I went back and I re-picked up She's Gone by David Bell because there was a night where I was like, I just feel like I need to finish a book. I just feel like I want a book that I feel like I could finish. I was like, wait a minute, you've already, you're already 100 pages into this one. Why don't you finish this one? I was like, oh, it's probably a good idea. So I ended up picking this one up and I finished this one. We're following, it's a YA novel, which I wasn't expecting because everything I knew by David Bell previously was not YA. So I was kind of shocked by that. And at the point before I picked this up, I really thought I was going to end up DNFing it since I hadn't picked it up in almost a month. So I was like, I'm probably going to end up DNFing it. So I should probably just finish it. So we're following this boy and he wakes up in the hospital and he finds out that him and his girlfriend after homecoming got into a car accident and the girl is missing. Like nobody knows where she is. And so they all think that he knows where she is, but unfortunately he has no memory of the accident whatsoever or prior to that. So he has no idea what happened. And so all suspicion goes to him. They think that he had something to do with it and he is trying determined to figure out where his girlfriend is, what happened, and did he have something to do with it? Um, I'm so glad that I didn't end up DNFing it because I ended up giving it four stars. The ending was like wild and I just I don't know like it ended up being I don't think it needed to be 400 pages like who no it's not 400 it's 370 pages for a YA book did it really need to be 370 pages for a thrillery type of suspense story no 
Um, I think he was trying to essentially almost kind of go for a gone girl in YA form type of thing where like because like she's missing and like he has to know what's like what happened or she's got to be alive somewhere because we don't have a dead body type of situation um like I said it was good it was solid for a YA it had me on my toes because I really didn't know what to expect with the ending um so I'm glad I finished it four stars um I ended up reading Off the Map by Trish Dollar which is the third book apparently to um float plan which float plan I gave five stars I think two years ago it was on my like top books of the year and for some reason I never read the sweet spot and then I had access because I got the um arc for the third book I don't know what who the second book follows like it's one of those books that you don't necessarily need to read in order like you could pick this one up and you don't even need to read book one or two to know what's going on because you're following different love interests um so technically I skipped book two so I have to go back and do that. But book three is following the best friend from book one. Book one is getting married. And um, so she flies over to Ireland for this wedding. And the best man, who is the guy from the first book's brother, picks her up from the airport. And they're supposed to go straight to um, the wedding venue place. Um, but they kind of get stuck and, um, they decide to do a little bit of road tripping on the way to the wedding. And it was just a really fun time. I gave it four stars. The author, uh, not the author, the main character, um, her dad is going through Alzheimer's. So she's also trying to deal with that and what that's like for her life. She hasn't been home in years because her dad didn't want her to see him going like through the deterioration of it. Um, so we're following that. So there was definitely some, like, in-depth, like, conversations that were also taking place. This book came out in the beginning of March. Um, I didn't love it as much as I love Float Plan. Like, this one was still very, very good. I really liked the setting. I really liked the dynamic between these two characters. I feel like it happened rather a little bit quickly. It was kind of almost like a love at first sight. Their chemistry took off right from page one of the meeting. I gave it four stars. It was a really solid read. Now I need to go back to finish the sweet spot because I don't know how I let that happen. I pre-ordered that last year and I never read it. So I need to go back, read book two. Um, so that way I can have the full picture, but it was really great to see kind of the culmination of the character from book one. And then like seeing this journey, it just, it was a good time. And I, like I said, I gave four stars. Then I did two more audiobooks before the month was over. I finished Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the second book in a series. I'm trying to think of what the series was called. The very first one was called It Happened One Summer. Um, it follows two sisters, and this is following the second sister. And she has gone back to L.A. She um, really wants to work with music. I think she's working on, I think it's like a movie. Um, and she really kind of wants to be able to do the music for this movie. And, like, they are like, L.A. is all wrong for this movie. What are we doing? And she's like, hey, I know this remote boating town. Want to go there? So they go there, and she kind of has this relationship with this guy that she had kind of sparked a little bit of a thing with in the first book. And he's kind of the town's, like, playboy who he just sleeps around with essentially everybody. He doesn't really sleep with people in town. He like goes off town because he doesn't want to sleep with someone's like cousin or neighbor or you know like something weird. So he tends to leave town to screw around but he's known as the ladies man and so like that's not something that like it gets looked into as to what has made him like that and she has to stay with him because her sister's, like, future in-laws are staying with them. So she doesn't have a place to stay. So she stays with him and they kind of spark their little romance together. Which is, okay, so it's weird because I really enjoyed Fox and Hannah in the first book. I thought, yes, give me their book. It's going to be great. And I didn't like them in this one. I still liked Hannah. I think Hannah as a character is definitely someone that I liked. I understood her movements in the book, but Fox just like, I don't know. I just, I felt like the Fox in here didn't match the Fox from the first book. Um, and I understand that he had a lot of like coming to terms with why he is the way he is, but I just, I don't know. They're, and they're just, I don't know. Mm. And then there were just, like, steamy scenes that just, like, rubbed me the wrong way. 
and I just, I don't know, I don't know, I just, it didn't do it for me, I didn't really like this one at all, which is such a bummer, because I love this cover, and I really had high hopes for it, but it just, didn't love that one, so three stars for that one. And then I finished a novel proposal today while I was organizing. I'm trying to, like, get all the kids, like, clothes ready for summer and making sure that we're pulling out things that don't fit them anymore. So there was just, like, so much folding and unfolding and refolding and just because I'm going to try what's about a travel. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but I feel like I'm, I need to do something and get them out of my attic. Um, so I was doing that, and so I was finishing listening to the audiobook for a novel proposal and this is following Sadie. And Sadie is an author. She usually writes westerns. And her her book people are like, so your westerns aren't selling. So we're canceling your book. And we want our $20,000 back. But also, if you would like, you can write a romance novel for us instead. And she's like, what? Like, how am I supposed to pay you back? Also, I don't write romance. Also, I've never been in love before, so how am I supposed to write a romance, right? So she goes, because her friend is like, hey, you need to go write. Like, New York is clearly distracting you. My mother just got this duplex beach cottage in South Carolina. Um, why don't you go there for the summer and just write? And she's like, good idea. So she bumps into this, like, grumpy neighbor of hers and, like, they kind of have a off relationship in the beginning. She decides to build a little free library right outside so that way she can get romance books to her so she could start studying romance. And then when she looks in the book of like in the little box, she finds a book that when you open it, there was like a cutout and there was a engagement ring in there. And she's like, oh my God. I need to find out who this belongs to. So she kind of like ropes the grumpy neighbor into helping her figure out where this box, where this ring came from. He's also going through his own stuff because his cousin basically took his girlfriend and now they're getting married and he's like, do I go to the wedding? I don't know. Do I? Like, so there's that kind of side of things. And so he's like trying to escape his family and his family business and stuff because he just doesn't want to deal with it. I gave it four stars. I hate to say this because she's one of my favorite authors. But I think once her next book comes out, which is the last book in the Riverbend series, I think I'm going to take a break from her. Or at least like putting money into buying her books because I haven't given one of her books five stars in a really long time. And I find them as like just easy to listen to books that I don't necessarily, like, find myself, like, excited for anymore. Like, I used to be like, oh, she's coming out with a new book. I'm so excited. And now I'm just like, yay, another book to check off my list. And, like, there's no excitement there anymore. And I just feel like I don't know what's missing. I don't know if I'm just, like, grown out of it a little bit, that I found other things that I like a little bit better or what. Like, she's still a, a solid reader. She's Denise Hunter. But I just feel like, I don't know, I think I might need a break. And then the book that I'm currently reading is Looking for Jane by Heather Marshall. I will talk about this in May because this video is already getting super long. I'm 70 pages in. I'm hoping to finish this soon. But that is what I'm currently reading. All right, my friends. This is a long video. I hope you stuck around. Let me know if you did. Um, let me know any of your thoughts about these books. I had a really amazing second half of April, which definitely makes up for the first half. Lots of four stars, lots of four and a half stars, five stars even. Definitely a good end of April. Um, let me know how your April went, and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye, everybody.